Hey guys, Miss Marusik here, and in this video, we're going to talk about writing equilibrium constant expressions. Now, hopefully by this point, we're familiar with this idea that an equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of the products over the concentration of reactants raised to exponents that are equal to their coefficients. However, there are certain states of substances that we would not include in this equilibrium expression, as well as there's some substitutions we can make in place of this C for concentration that's a little more indicative of what kind of concentrations, what kind of process or reaction is occurring to give us a little more information about what is actually going on. So let's start off here by looking at some guidelines for writing equilibrium constant expressions, which by the way, we can also use these same rules for writing reaction quotients, because as a reminder, an equilibrium expression is a reaction quotient once we've reached equilibrium. Those two are the same if our rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. So it says here that we do not include solids or pure liquids. Um, pure liquids would be things like water, um, or you could have liquid bromine or liquid mercury. And the reason why we don't include these is they don't have concentrations. So if I don't have a molarity value, I can't plug in a molarity value into the equilibrium expression. And so therefore I just would not include those substances at all. So the states that are included would be aqueous solutions um, as well as gases. Um, gases technically do have a concentration because all gases are dissolved in air. Now the Kc value is considered a pure number ratio, so conveniently there are no units. So one less thing to worry about with this. Um, also, the Kc value for a given reaction doesn't change except with temperature. So for a given reaction, you will always have a consistent Kc value at a particular temperature. And usually you can look up the Kc value for a reaction at a standard SATP conditions, 25 degrees Celsius, on standard tables. There are tables of that information available. However, if the temperature changes, then what happens is the Kc value ends up being different. And so you'll often see temperature reported along with Kc values. You don't have to use that temperature in your math, but you would see it included as part of the information in the question. So now let's talk about some of those subscripts we can use with a Kc value. So of course, with Kc, C being for concentration, that would be for a general equilibrium constant. Um, but sometimes you might see them use KEQ instead, EQ being for equilibrium. However, let's say that my expression that I'm trying to write an equilibrium constant for happens to be an ionic salt that's dissolving. We would call that process trying to figure out a solubility product. And so we give it a subscript of SP. And we actually do this for insoluble salts. Insoluble salts reach an equilibrium with their dissolving. Um, typically your soluble salts are so forced over to the product side that we don't typically calculate a KSP for those. We just say they proceed to completion. But insoluble salts technically dissolve a little bit and so they actually do make equilibrium. And so this is one of the things that we'll be working with in a later video. Now, equilibrium constants for a weak acid dissociation is called a Ka, A being for acid. Um, if we have a weak base dissociation, that would be a Kb we'd be calculating. And the equilibrium constant for the self-dissociation of water would be called Kw. Now, these three right here are something that we're going to briefly look at in this unit, but we're actually going to spend a lot more time on those in our next unit, Unit 8, when we talk about acid and bases. Now, our last one down here is what is called a Kp, or an equilibrium constant for gas pressures, typically in atmosphere. Technically, pressures are kind of indicative of concentrations in some form because as pressure increases, if our conditions other than pressure stay the same, um, what that would mean is that my molecules must be more tightly packed together. And so that would indicate a greater concentration if volumes were consistent. So some things to watch out for when doing a Kp, because we're not using molarity, 
We do not want to use brackets here. And so therefore, what you'll typically see is what you see up here. Well, they'll just put the pressure of the products over the pressure of the reactants raised to their coefficients. And sometimes you might see those pressures in parentheses. And so I'll show you how that could look here in just a little bit. But the key thing is on a KP, you would not want to use brackets here. Now, it says some other information down here. Uh, the value for Kp is typically not the same as the value for Kc. Obviously, while pressure and molarity are related, they're not equal to each other. Um, they are related by this equation right here. Um, you notice it involves our gas law constant, it involves temperature, as well as a change in moles. Now this equation is not tested on the AP test, but I wanted to show it to you to, so you can see that the two are related and you could calculate back and forth between them if you needed to. And that's something that you might have to do in a college chemistry class. I will tell you this though, um, KP and KC can only be the same if there are only gases involved, so there's no aqueous solutions or anything like that, and also if the number of moles of gas are the same for both reactants and products, meaning the change in the number of moles is zero. Because what that would do is back up here, if your change in the number of moles is zero, that would eliminate this term of RT, and so therefore Kp would be equal to Kc. However, I'll be honest with you, most of the time the two are not equal to each other, and so you have to deal with the two kind of individually on their own. So now let's look at some samples of what all of these could look like. So on these reactions, the first thing they want us to do is to put a check under the compounds that would be included in an equilibrium constant expression. So that would be our gases and our aqueous solutions. Um, but we're going to put an X under those that would not be included. So for example, solids or pure liquids. And then we are going to write the equilibrium expression for each of those chemical reactions. So to start us off here, I notice that everything in this reversible reaction with our double arrow, meaning it reaches equilibrium, everything is a gas. And so everything would get included in our equilibrium expression. And so what I can do here is put my two products, CO and H2, raise them to their coefficients. CO had a coefficient of one over here. H2 had a coefficient of three, and so I included those. Of course, one I don't have to write, just leaving a blank would indicate that it's one. And then I'm going to put that over my two reactants, both raised to a coefficient of one. Now this one is interesting because it asks us to write also a K for both molarity and pressure. So the molarity one I would call a KC for concentration, but then I'm going to write a KP. Because these are all gases, I can write that pressure equilibrium expression. But when I do that, notice first off, I did not use brackets. I used parentheses instead. And because I don't have the brackets to specifically indicate molarity, I have to indicate what unit I'm measuring these in. So you notice I put pressures with each of these. Now if this idea of like showing brackets versus writing the P sounds familiar is because we did this same thing when we did rate law expressions in kinetics. So that might be why you're kind of familiar with the idea of if I'm using molarities, I put brackets. If I'm using pressure, we can do parentheses, but I also have to show that symbol of P. All right, let's look at some other ones down here. For this next one here, I notice that my reactant is a solid, but my two products are both gases. So notice when I wrote my KC expression, I only included the products. I did not have to include a reactant at the bottom because the only one that I had was a solid. Um, you could put that this is over one, but it is not necessary to put that. Now the next one here, I noticed that the I2 was a solid, so that would not get included, while the other two gases do get included, and so you can see an example of what that would look like here. Again, I just leave out the I2, it's that easy. So now let's talk about a few situations that have some interesting quirks to them. So starting off here, we see an ionic compound that is dissociating into two ions. However, something interesting about this ionic compound is that if I was to check silver chromate on my solubility rules, I would actually see that it's an 
insoluble ionic compound, which means if I was to put a state on it within a chemical reaction, I would put that it's a solid precipitate. However, its dissolving equation would actually occur a little bit, just enough that we actually create an equilibrium situation. So I can write an equilibrium expression for that ionic compound. But when I do so, again, the solid would not get included. So only the two ions get included over here. And of course, my silver would have that coefficient of two. So therefore, it has an exponent of two. Uh, do notate that I did show the charges on those ions within that equation. However, since I had a solid here, of course, I left the denominator blank. Now, since this was a solid ionic that was dissolving, I would call this a solubility product. And so you can see that I've replaced that C for concentration with that SP to indicate that this was for a salt that was dissolving. Could you leave the C there? Absolutely. But the SP gives a little bit more information about what's taking place. Now, our next one here, if I look at my states, I had liquid water, so that would not get included. And then I had hydronium, H3O plus, and hydroxide, OH minus ions that were forming. And so here, again, my liquid would not get included, but my two ions would. Since they each had a coefficient of one, I would leave an exponent of one. But since this was for water dissociating, I would actually give this the symbol of KW. Now what's interesting is that this equilibrium expression has a very infamous amount to it, it has a very infamous value for that KC. And that value is one times 10 to the negative 14th when you're at 25 degrees Celsius. The reason why this is kind of famous is because we utilize this equation when we get to our acid and base calculations. So it ends up being really, really convenient to use in our next unit eight that we're going to be looking at. Now on this one, I'm going to go through and look at my states. I noticed that the liquid water would not get included. And so everything else wouldn't get included. So here I have my products over reactants. However, this was a for a base that was producing OH, and so I called it a KB here. Again, is it a KC equilibrium expression? Absolutely, but putting KB here gives me a little bit more information that this was for a weak base. Here I have a weak acid doing an equilibrium expression, and so since I'm making that H plus 1 from that acid, I would put Ka here when I write this equilibrium expression of products over reactants. Last but not least on here, the quirk on this one is that my product does not get included in my equilibrium expression. Um, so only the reactants are getting included. And when that happens, I do have to put a placeholder of one on the top. Otherwise, I can't put those reactants on the bottom. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you're thinking, man, Miss Marusik, that was a lot of subscripts that I'm going to have to remember for different situations. I kind of have some good news for you. I want to show you for just a second what's all on your formula chart. So on your formula chart on the equilibrium section, first off you'll notice a general equation for Kc and they even give you a sample reaction here showing you that the little a, b, c, and d that would be your coefficients I would put those in as exponents in my equilibrium expression. Now the Kp here, the pressure, notice that it does not have those brackets, but instead now we have parentheses with those Ps in our expression for pressure. Then we have Ka and Kb for acids and bases, and you can see they kind of given us a general format here. For an acid, we're going to have an H with that A negative, that other part to the acid, over the acid overall. Here on Kb, you would have your OH with your hydrogen and base together over just the base by itself. And then finally here is that Kw of H times OH equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14th at 25 degrees Celsius. Now I'll be honest with you, in this unit, we're going to focus mostly on Kc and Kp. 
However, we are going to deal with Ka, Kb, and Kw in our next unit. The only equilibrium expression that is not shown on here is Ksp. However, it follows that general format of the Kc, so the fact that Ksp isn't on here is really not that big of a deal. All right, I hope you're feeling confident with being able to write equilibrium expressions for reactions. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.